Jacob was one of the great patriarchs of the Bible, yet, like each of us, he didn't start out perfect. He went through quite the cycle of growth before he became the legendary founder of the House of Israel. Jacob's relationship with his brother Esau includes deceit, estrangement, and conflict, but ends with repentance and reconciliation. Their story can teach us that God works with us in our imperfections to bring about his covenant promises and to help us become the great disciples we were meant to be. The Jacob and Esau story can be mapped out into three repeating cycles that follow Jacob's journey of character growth. Each of these sections features an elaborate deception and a divine appearance to establish the covenant. Each time this cycle repeats, we as readers can witness how Jacob matured from a younger brother to a husband, father, patriarch, and prophet. Genesis chapters 25 to 27 introduce us as the readers to Jacob and Esau at birth. From their earliest beginnings, Jacob and Esau were consistently in conflict. During labor, Jacob grabbed onto Esau's heel to allude to Jacob's future role as a supplanter. Jacob later convinced Esau to sell his birthright for a mess of pottage. And then in chapter 27 of Genesis, Rebekah and Jacob deceived Isaac into giving the firstborn blessing to Jacob, supplanting Esau as the preeminent son. Rebekah and Jacob may have been trying to pursue the Lord's promise that Jacob would be the ruling son, but it came at the cost of deeply hurting Jacob's brother Esau. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. In this episode, Esau comes across as a deeply sympathetic and even heartbreaking character. However, he became so upset that he conspired to kill Jacob. So Rebekah sent Jacob away to Laban's household in Haran. At the conclusion of this episode, Jacob had his first of three encounters with the Lord. On Jacob's journey to Laban, Jacob stopped for the night and experienced a vision we sometimes refer to as Jacob's ladder. When Jacob beheld the heavens open, the Lord spoke to him and repeated the blessings that he first gave to Abraham. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. So in this first phase, Jacob met his brother Esau, deceived him, fled from his presence, and the Lord reiterated that Jacob would be heir to the Abrahamic covenant. This pattern of deception and then theophany repeated itself in Genesis 29 through 32 when Jacob lived with Laban. In this episode, Jacob ended up on the receiving end of deception from Laban. Jacob wanted to marry Laban's younger daughter, Rachel, but Laban tricked Jacob by disguising the older daughter, Leah, as Rachel on the wedding night, just as Jacob disguised himself as Esau in the first episode. In a poetic reference to what Jacob did to Esau, Laban declared, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Jacob spent several more years in Laban's household. He married Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and Zilpah and had 12 children. He accrued wealth and prosperity and fled Laban's household to return to his homeland. But on his way, he still had to deal with an unavoidable re-encounter with his brother Esau. The night before Jacob confronted Esau, he was afraid, distressed, and he wrestled all night. This might have been Jacob's lowest point in his hero's journey as he came to terms with his past actions against his brother. But Jacob wrestled an angel, and the angel blessed Jacob with a new name, Israel as a symbol of his new commitments to God and his place in the Abrahamic covenant. So in this second phase, Jacob once again experienced deception that had to do with the rights of older and younger siblings. But in this version, Jacob was the one who was deceived and bore the consequences. Jacob fled from the house of Laban, and once again, a divine being reiterated the blessings of the Abrahamic covenant. In the third and final iteration of this cycle, Jacob made restitution for his earlier deception. With tensions high, Jacob led his family in an entourage of tribute and gifts to meet Esau. Jacob was scared for his life, but he also trusted in the promises the Lord had made him. Upon arriving, Esau did not attack or assault. Instead, Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Both Jacob and Esau learned of the sweet power of forgiveness in this tender moment. Jacob, perhaps still feeling a little guilty about taking Esau's blessing, urged Esau to receive Jacob's blessing and gifts. 
Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought unto thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. After their joyous reunion, Jacob decided not to dwell with Esau and made an excuse to continue onward. God then commanded Jacob to return to Bethel to sacrifice. There, God again appeared to Jacob and repeated once more the promises and blessings of the Abrahamic covenant. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So in this third phase, Jacob came full circle by redeeming himself for his earlier deception to Esau. Jacob returned and reported to the Lord at Bethel and received a reaffirmation of his covenant blessings. In each of these phases of the story, Jacob had repeated encounters with the Lord. Each time Jacob went through a hard time or made a mistake, the Lord was there for him. After he deceived Esau, he met with the Lord at Bethel. After he was deceived by Laban, he met again with the Lord at Peniel. And then when Jacob made restitution for his deception with Esau, he met once again with the Lord at Bethel. The Lord declared, I am with thee. And he reaffirmed that Jacob was a covenant son. Jacob had to experience some hard things in order to learn from his past actions and grow into a great patriarch. But in none of these experiences was Jacob ever left alone. The Lord was with Jacob in his highest points and also his lowest. In our lives, when we struggle with trials or with the consequences of our own actions, we don't have to feel alone either. The Lord doesn't forsake us when we make mistakes or when we go through hard times. The Lord is with us, reminding us of our covenant blessings if we trust in him and keep the faith. The Lord's continual companionship helped Jacob to wrestle through his struggles and redeem his relationship with his brother. The Lord's love and atoning grace can heal wounds and repair broken relationships. The Lord never gave up on Jacob, and he won't give up on you. Behold, I am with thee.